Good morning, everyone. In the United States of America, happy pre-Thanksgiving. It is my, my favorite holiday, and, and we always, growing up, would have what people would call strays at our house, and one such group was uh, when John worked at Pete Mark Mitchell, I don't even know what it's called now. Uh, there were a couple families from, couples from England that were like on an exchange program for a year or two. And they would always come to our house, my parents' house. And I remember that they were just so amazed at whip, at whipped cream in a deodorant can. <laughs> Never quite thought of it that way. And I know there are purists out there that make it from scratch. Oh, nay, nay, not in my family. So, <laughs> hey, everybody. I know right now everybody is super busy or maybe even traveling. I mean, I don't know. But I wanted to get on with um, the interviews that we got at Houston, all right? And so today we're going to talk about Helen Godden. She is from Australia. And one of the things I adore about Helen's work is that each quilt, it's not like there's a style where you could go, oh, well, that's that person's or that's that person's. Each quilt is a new adventure in creativity. So what I want to say is that she started, well, let's take a look at some of her quilts before we get to the video, okay? Because she had a quilt there that if you were at, festival or market, you, you couldn't miss it. I mean, this thing is huge. So let's take a look at some of her quilts. I went to her website and there were so many to choose from that I just kind of went boom, 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 boom. So um, this is called Rhythmful and check out the quilting on that. It is just absolutely beautiful. And I do have a video as after we go through this stuff. Okay, C is for couching. Okay, this is, you just saw one kind of work that she does. And now here's another kind where there's couching in it. And, and fortunately, there was a close-up on her site. So, um... Oh, Nancy goes, I don't know where you're broadcasting from, but it's noon here, not 10 a.m. I am in California. So I really have not played with couching. I don't know how many of you have, but I mean, like even the corn, that's just absolutely fabulous. And I think it's a fun thing to think about doing. And I know for sure my Bernina has a couching foot and my guess is most brands do. And it looks like she just used yarns and things like that. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Oh, well, you know who loves this one, me. Uh, what One of the things I love about this is as you look at it, each little area gives you something else to examine of what the kitty thinks about when they're sleeping. I just think this is wonderful. Again, Helen Godden, and she is from Australia, I believe, and I don't know if this is in the video, I can't remember. She started quilting at age 38. How about that? Now, come on, how does that even relate to the quilt before? I mean, it doesn't, and that's what I think is so wonderful about her work. There was a quilt maker in our area, it is a quilt maker, Mary Mashuda, and actually we did a legend show with both Mary and the late Roberta, her twin sister. And one of the things I always appreciated about Mary was that when she'd do a quilt, then she'd go do another quilt and you wouldn't walk up and say, oh, that's X, Y, Z. So that's the same way I look at Helen. Okay. Well, there's that one. All right. We just did that one. I mean, look at the diversity there, right? Completely different. And look at the background quilting. I wonder, I always wonder if I can blow these things up, and I really can't when, I, when I'm in here. Um, very interesting. It kind of looks like a woven grid. And I will tell you what, everybody, when I look at a quilt, while I'm looking at these daisies, they're absolutely spectacular, I pay equal amount attention to the background. 
or quilting. And you could even see with that tallest daisy of all, there's circles around there. And so maybe that implies the sun. I, I don't know. We got to get her on the show. We just do. It's just tough when people are from Australia. I mean, that is a big ask. But Helen, if you're watching, anytime you let us know. Maybe you'll be over here teaching or something like that. Okay, and here she is. Here she is with another piece of hers. Now, it looks like that might have been taken at market. That's what, or um, at, at Houston at some point, I should say. Okay, here's another uh, vegetable one. And it was interesting because I like to show the big one first and then show the little one. So let's go take the little one and then I'm going to come back to the big one. There's a little bit of detail in there, people. <laughs> Just a little bit of detail. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's look at the big one again. All that detail in that corn on the left-hand side. Okay, and uh, here's another one. Again, none of them relate to each other, which I just think is absolutely fabulous. But let's get a close-up on this one. I think it was the upper left-hand guy. Wow. Wow. Everything's right about it. The skin tone is right. The eyes have that little sparkle in it. The lips have the rounding of the bottom lip. I mean, it's just the detail here. Okay. So let's just stop and look at this for a minute. This is the case of when you're looking at the quilt, you can't really take it in all in one swoop. What I'm just noticing now are those kind of flying geese that are flowing through, through the birdie's wings. And then there is a close-up of the birdie's face. <laughs> I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. But Helen does, that's for sure. And she's a joyful person, too. I love this. The simplicity, and yet, on the other hand, you've got um, a lot going on with those borders, and nothing is regular about those borders. It, the, asymmet the asymmetrical aspect of it is something that really rocks my boat. And you know, it's by looking at quilts like this that you kind of put it in your brain, and then you've got... Then you've got a frame of reference when you go towards something else. I think a lot of times, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on my soapbox right now. I think a lot of times people slap on borders just to make it bigger for whatever reason. And um, that, that always kind of makes me cringe a little bit. But in the case of this, it is an integral part of the design. I believe I have a close-up. Yeah. Yeah. I could look at that quilting on the darker pink bottom half for hours. Look at how she just went all over the place, okay? Now we're moving in a completely different direction. <laughs> These are all, oh, okay, also let me point out on the bottom right, 23 out of 205. That's how many images were on her site, and I'll show you that in a moment, how to get to it. Um, and I just, I didn't know what to do, but just start going through and grabbing them. Here's a close-up of the man. You know, when I see somebody like Helen with all this, I, it begs to me the question of, has she studied under other people? I mean, how, how, how does she get these chops, you know? Okay, I think this one I, was like a big, big, ba a fat favorite of mine. The soulfulness of that young lady. And then the hair. I wouldn't have thought to do hair like that with those little chunks. I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. Okay, so here 
is the close-up. You may want to go through this again and look, or, and look more closely, but also you may want to just go to her website, all right, and, um, and look at everything. Uh, give yourself a nice chunk of time to be able to do that. I have to tell you, when, when I put together one of these or I go to my inbox and I put together your quilts and all that, it's like a private quilt show for me in my house and it is just glorious. All right, so let's take a look at the interview that Lilo got at Houston, all right? Here we go. Hi, we're on the uh, show floor at the Quilt Houston Quilt Festival, and I'm so excited to be here with Helen Godden and this amazing 22-foot quilt, Yep, which is a little bit bigger than most people want to tackle yes. um, as a project. <laughs> and so obviously we want to hear kind of the backstory. What was the impetus of creating the story? And then we want to kind of go into what, what's actually on the quilt as far as the images. Right, well, the simple answer, Lilo, is COVID. <laughs> Like so many people, we yeah. were at home. Yeah, some people learned to play the piano, some people learned a new language. Some people baked a lot of bread, There's yeah. a lot of bread baking going on. I decided to make a 22 foot long quilt. And why 22 feet? It was never actually the intention. I had a design that I did back in 2018 and I promptly put it away because I thought I'll never get to do such a big quilt. Mm -hmm. And then literally COVID came along and that design fell out of the cupboard and said to me, let's do this. So I had a, revisited that design yeah. and decided to make it seven times bigger than my original plan. And so that ended up being 22 feet. So there was no real reason. It was just, I decided to go big because I had time to, to tackle something big for a change. Right, instead of trying to like stay within the time frame for yeah. a show or an exhibition. Because there were no show deadlines. There was no classes to prepare for. It, it actually was free time to get on with something creative. Yeah, and um, you um, have elements on here that some of us who are not familiar with the flora and fauna of uh, Australia are really interesting. So let's say, for example, this one I do recognize because I've been to the zoo with my kids when they were little. So I yep. know that's a platypus. That's but, the platypus. But what is this little guy over here? So this little fella here is the echidna. Now, some people will think he's a bit like a hedgehog is probably the closest thing you'd liken right. it to, but it is not a hedgehog at all. Um, so he is furry, he does have spikes that will come out and he'll go into a ball if he's, if he's threatened. Um, he does eat ants with his long sticky tongue. But what's amazing about these two, and I'm, I'm so proud of my Australian flowers and, and animals and things, because these two are mammals, right, so they're warm blooded, they have fur, they suckle their young, but they lay an egg. Oh my goodness. And they're not a bird or a reptile or a fish. They're, they're a warm-blooded mammal and they lay eggs and yet the two of them aren't even related. It's just so amazing how how unique our animals and, and flora are in my country. Yeah. I love all that. Absolutely. So. And then these little little daisy-like flowers. Yeah, so these are a, a paper daisy, an everlasting daisy that grow out in the, in the outback. Mm -hmm. And I just love them because they, their nickname is poached egg daisy because they look like poached eggs. So, you know, that's pretty fun if you're out and about and suddenly there's a sea of poached eggs out in front of you, so, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's spectacular. And so just on a, just an understanding on a scale, you, this was a white piece of fabric. Yes. And then you went and drew so, out the design. Yes, so I had the design enlarged um, and then I'm able to trace it because okay. the fabric I'm using, the unwashed muslin is, you know, a little bit see-through. Right. So I'm able to trace the design on. And then I've painted with dye, so that is all painted with dye. It's all one cloth, one whole one cloth. One whole cloth, so yep. there's nothing appliqued no, on top. No, okay. nothing at all. And so when you get up close, you can see some areas have got a beautiful texture to them, and that's when I've added salt to the wet dye area, whereas other areas haven't got that texture because there's no salt. So you can get the different texture with salt and different techniques. And then the whole thing is um, outlined with a black Sharpie, and then it's um, quilted. So and it's quilted in sections. So the back of it is kind of quilt as you go, if you like. There's seven sections on the back. Because that was the part that was worrying me the most of how on earth am I going to quilt I this? was wondering because, I mean, you'd have to have several tables 
stacked up yeah. so that you could at least lay this out. Yeah, so I'm not dealing with the whole thing at once. Okay. So I've sandwiched the middle section okay. and pinned it and then as that's quilted I've added the next section of batting and backing mm -hmm. and moved on. So the back is in sections a bit like a quilt as you go but otherwise it's whole cloth and it was done on a handy quarter um, sweet 16, a sit down machine, okay. not a frame. Most people are expecting this to have been on a frame but it was on a sit down so it's got a larger throat right but i'm still working domestically In a small, small yeah. area yeah yeah, yeah. um wow I, and i'm sure the, the big question everybody always asks is you know time frame so 75 hours of painting and 110 hours of quilting people always ask so i always keep a little tally right because although i did it over a six month period it did not take me six months to do it so i keep a little tally right because the most i can do in a day is say four hours realistically mm -hmm. of quilting um, before your shoulders start to give way so yeah i just keep that little mark and um yeah 75 hours and the other stats are um 17 yards of binding and 10 miles of thread and, and lots and lots of paint uh, not too much paint. Really? Not too much. Only one full set of my sun dyes and then um, 4.25 million stitches. Just approximately. Uh, approximately. I didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it is absolutely fabulous. And then the other thing that I was noticing is some of the quilting designs that you have on the various um, animals, um, are they, do they represent something as well? They're a little bit leaning towards um, an indigenous feel, but they are by no means a, a copy of them. Right. It was more to the point that um, our animals, I didn't want to just stitch the fur on them, that's that's boring. I want mm -hmm. More is more, I want to get more patterning in there. So as a way of getting more patterning, I'm identifying the muscular shapes or the cheek, you know, whatever it might be. And even these lines here that are slightly curved helps give the roundness because otherwise they're it's a very, very oversimplified shape. It's a real cartoon mm -hmm. simplified shape. So those that quilting helps give more interest and give it a more rounded look. But I have got lots of little things hidden in there. So I've got um, my little spirit dancers in there. I've got kangaroos hidden in there. All sorts of things are hidden in the quilting. Oh, and then also I wanted to ask about the emu with the little chicks. That so you the emu is... Um, uh, yeah, a bit of a feminist really because that's actually the male emu because uh, he'll look after the eggs and the babies while Mrs. Emu's off having a fling. So oh, he's a little... Having he's, a lo he's, she's, she's out in, under the umbrella having a little rest. Yeah, perhaps. Relaxing. Perhaps. So, perhaps. Yeah, so that's <laughs> definitely the, the father emu looking after the um, the eggs and the, and the chicks, yeah. Oh, it's super, super fun. And so is this the beginning of, of a series and you're going to do several versions of this? I'm not sure. Every now and then I think I'll, I'll continue the story onwards. But it, the other half of me sort of thinks I've, I've done this, I don't need to do it again. So I'm really not sure because this was never really a plan. It just, it just literally was something to keep me going during COVID. Right. So what I ever intended to do with it, I mean, it can never compete because it's too big. Right, you right. Know, so it, it never really even had a plan. It, it's almost a karma thing. If it fell out of the drawer, it was meant exactly. to. Exactly. It was just to keep to us be. all going during COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank, and thank you. Thank you so much for sharing thank that with you. us. It was great um, learning about this quilt. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, Becky, your wishes are command. What just, Justin was the camera person, and he did a scan of the whole quilt in video. So let's take a look at that. Uh, here we go. Four point two million stitches. <laughs> so Sherry put something here, um, and she said that she follows her on YouTube, Helen Godden, and that actually that this technique she has some classes on it. I haven't checked it out, so I can't verify. But Sherry, thank you for putting that in the comments because I think a lot of people might run to YouTube after this to see 
how she does this thing. And see, this is the thing that's so amazing is that every quilt ha looks different, looks different. And so I was ever so glad that Lilo and Justin got this video and they've gotten more of which I will be happy to share with you. Now, I uh, before we say goodbye and I'll come back in a moment, but I do have a public service announcement, a PSA that I want to share with you regarding Thanksgiving. I remember when we were kids, I, this is like really gross, that we would eat so much that we would like wallow on the living room floor like whales. <laughs> so PSA, here we go. Right here, right here, baby. I think that's a plan. <laughs> just, so we are going to Adair's. She's hosting it. Thank you, because I don't have a kitchen. And um, even if I do have a kitchen, I think she's picked it up and is going to do it from here on out, which is fabulous in my book. And um, two of my friends are the strays that are coming along. And one is Karen and one is Dara. And Adair is very, uh, knows, he's, knows my B, BFFs very, very, very well. So um, I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving in the United States of America. And if you are uh, celebrate it in another portion of the world, I, I, I wish you happy Thanksgiving. And so let me tell you... Uh, again, Helen, we want you on the show. I'm pretty sure Lilo's going to reach out to you, but I know this is a really big ask, unless maybe we can get you some teaching gigs or something like that, okay? Um, Monday, <clears throat> the cabinets are going to be installed, and I am going to beg to not be here because I've been very fortunate that the noise that usually comes through, and it is right adjacent to my sewing room, like bang, bang, bang. It would be too disruptful, and it would be disruptful for whoever's video I'm going to share that day. So we'll be back Wednesday. I've got to talk to Mary Kay and see which videos have been edited. In the meantime, if you have any questions that you want to ask me, please feel free to at um, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at The Quilt Show. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I, I am ever so thankful for every single one of you that has stayed with the program here and, and has followed me and has given me support. Um, not that it's all about me, 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 because it's about the whole world. But what Thanksgiving brings to my heart is just kindness, just kindness and recognition of those who have lifted you up, whether you know them or not, right? Okay, so Helen's getting big, big review. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we will. I'm not going anywhere, Kathy, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think, I think we're going to be living in our, in our camping gear. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.